Hello, I'm Martin Tysons, and I welcome you on behalf of TAF International to this section of the Malware Introduction Training on Input and Output Descriptions. A model in Malware consists of several systems and IV models that have a specific interaction with each other. For example, a model in Malware can consist of an occupant with a vehicle environment, an airbag and a belt system. In these systems, the user can specify multi-body and AV components. Each system can contain multiple AV models. The systems and AV models in Manimo interact with each other through force models. These forces can come from springs and dampers, or supports, or contacts, or actuators, and others. To reflect this hierarchical input structure, Madimo has a typical input deck structure which is based on XML syntax that we will explore later in this video. If you look at the slide, you will see that a typical Madimo input deck starts with a run ID to make sure that specific information for a simulation is echoed consistently throughout the output files of a Madimo simulation. Beneath the run ID, there are control elements, elements that we'll go into later, but that specify the memory allocation, the time steps used for a Madimo simulation, as well as the desired output. Beneath these control elements, the user defines all the systems, and within these systems, multi-body elements and AV models. To define the interaction between the systems and AV models, subsequently in the input deck, the user defines the loads on the systems, as well as the contact interaction between the various components. And finally, the user can retrieve sensor and output from the simulation for further analysis. We will now gradually go into more detail of the input deck of a, of a Madimo simulation. And we'll start with the run ID. The run ID that is on the top of the Madimo input deck contains a short text description that can be used to characterize your simulation and it will be echoed consistently throughout the output files of a Madimo simulation. The product information can be used to specify, for example, versioning of the simulation input decks. If you have a look at the occupant models from the Madimo installation, you will also see that the product information in occupant models is consistently used to give the version of a specific dummy model. The control allocation element is used to specify the number of CPUs that is to be used for a Madimo simulation, as well as the amount of memory that is to be used for the simulation. In the control analysis dot time element, the user specifies the start time of the simulation, the end time, the time step, and the integration method. There's a couple of other input uh, attributes that can be used to, to steer the details of the uh, uh, time stepping uh, algorithm, uh, but we'll not go into these uh, for now. The control output block is used to specify what output definitions in the input deck are actually um, written to a file uh, on disk. For example, the output, the control output element contains time history and animation output time steps. It contains attributes to uh, control the sampling and the filtering, as well as specifications what kind of animation the, the user wants to see, just kinematic animation or animation with, um, with multi-body forces or with uh, contour plots for finite elements, and the time history output that can be used to uh, retrieve information uh, on uh, time steps, on multi-body uh, characteristics, on finite elements uh, characteristics, context, energy, etc. Then we come to the systems. The systems are divided in two specific elements, the system model and later the system ref space. In a system model, 
the user specifies all multi-body and FE components for a specific part of the model. The input deck for a matrix simulation can contain multiple system models to make sure that all these parts of the model are well separated and, uh, and, and there's a modular uh, hierarchical uh, structure of your input deck. The system ref space is a special kind of system that is not used to specify multi-body or uh, multi-body joints and bodies. The system ref space is used to specify the non-movable uh, environment. That environment can be composed of planes and ellipsoids, but it can also be used to specify fi finite element structure that is fixed to the uh, to the reference to the to the fixed earth. In order to globally translate the uh, Maribo model, there is an initial dot ref space element that can be used to reposition the entire model. Beneath these systems, the user can specify FE models. Multiple FE models can be defined in each system, and note that the hierarchical structure of a manual input deck ensures that the known element uh, numbering of an FE model does not have to be unique across FE models. FE models themselves can be repositioned within a system using an initial .FE model uh, element which can be used to translate and rotate an FE model globally, as well as to position it with respect to a multi-body object. Now let's go into more detail into the XML input syntax. A manual input deck is written in XML. And XML contains XML elements, which are the manual keywords, XML attributes, which beneath the keywords are the actual input parameters, and ensure that there is a model hierarchy, meaning that there is parent and child elements, as we've seen before for a system and an FE model, for example. If you open a manual input deck with a standard editor, non-Xmagic editor, you will see a header. A header that contains the type of XML version that is used, the Manimo release, here for example R7.5, and which DTD, document type definition, is to be used. Furthermore, what kind of data type or type definition file is to be used. All that information is automatically entered into your input deck by Xmagic when creating a new file. The XML elements for a Manimo simulation are described in the documentation called the Reference Manual. In the Reference Manual, all the XML elements are listed alphabetically and are shown with their parent elements. Beneath that, the related elements, meaning all the child elements of the specific XML element, are listed, where the user has to note that the cardinality of an element can vary between one and many, and some elements may be required and others may be optional. Note that there is a specific ordering of related elements. First, the user has to specify the required elements and then the optional elements. In both groups, the user first has to define the elements that can, spe that can be specified only once and then the elements that can be specified many times. There is an option in the preprocessor Xmagic that helps the user by ticking the option insert DTD, insert elements according to a fixed DTD uh, ordering, um, and that helps to position the elements in the right position. XML elements are, are grouped in uh, element classes. For example, all characteristics are named characteristic as a superclass, then a dot, and then the type of characteristic. For example, there's a characteristic dot load to specify loads on multibody objects. And there's a characteristic dot contact that is to be used to specify characteristics that are used in contact definitions. 
Another example is the set of materials in Xmagic. For example, material.isolin for an isotropic linear material or isopla for an isotropic plastic material. All the XML elements have XML attributes, which are the parameters for that specific element. For the attributes, there are two different types. The required attributes, which have to be specified, and the optional attributes, which can be specified, and often have a certain default value, which is also shown in the reference menu. The required attributes are written in bold, and are automatically inserted together with the XML elements when using Xmagic. Note that attributes may have a domain from which the user can select specific values or a range uh, and, and the value entered by the user has to be within that range. This is also again checked by the parser of the manual solver. There are different types of data. All this data is checked by the preprocessor, but there's attributes that can have an integer value, there are attributes that have a real value, or a boolean, or a text tree. All of this is dictated by the DTD, which again refers to the type defs file to understand what kind of parameter is, is, is meant. Let's take a closer look at the identifier attributes, the ID and the name. The ID is a required attribute for all those XML elements that have an ID and must be unique for a specific superclass, meaning that, for example, no material can have the same ID within the same system. The name is optional, but when provided must also be unique. The ID or name can be used to refer to an XML element from within another XML element. That, ref that referring can be done in a relative manner, meaning that you refer from the XML element to another XML element, or it can be done in an absolute manner, which means that you specify the path to the element starting from the manual root. There's a couple of useful special manual XML elements that I need to know as a user. The include elements can be used to group and put into a file a set of elements that need to be maintained in a specific central location and that can be included at various spots in the input deck or in different simulation. The define elements allow a user to parameterize your input deck. Note that the define elements no need to be put under a group define element where the group define on root level specifies global parameters and the group define element in system level defines local variables. A variable is referred to in the input deck by starting the name with a hash sign. The disable element can be used to temporarily disable or delete a specific part of your input deck. And the comment element can be used to specify user nodes and have more guidance and more uh, documentation in your simulation input deck. A special feature of the manual input deck is the use of mathematical expressions. Note that mathematical expressions can be used in every attribute where a value of type real is expected. In order to use mathematical expressions, simply type a formula as if you were working in, for example, uh, Excel, but without the equal sign. There's a couple of operators that can be used, which are described in chapter 3 of the reference manual. Note that the mathematical expressions can be used directly in an attribute or can be used in a define, which is subsequently used in an attribute. For further structuring the manual input deck, manual allows to use tables. Tables can occur in two forms, which is the hard or text table, which is an actual piece of text in a C data element 
that is interpreted by the parser uh, as, as a table. If these kind of tables are not desired, but uh, a certain structure or overview of the model is desired in your, in your pre-processing phase, Xmagic allows to uh, group certain elements in a soft table, which is only a visual representation of a table, but keeps the XML syntax intact. Then we've come to the output files of Manimo. When running a Manimo simulation, a couple of standard output files are created, which are the log file, which contains the runtime information, the reprint file, which contains an echo of all the input and several errors and warnings uh, and some runtime information. And there is the peak file or PKX file, which contains all the peaks uh, of the signals and all the injury values. Note that there is a peak file and a PKX file. The latter one is specifically used for the protocol rating tool. When the user specifies an animation output, by default, the KN3 file is created to have a visual representation of the Manimo model and the simulation results. Note that the user can specify whether it wants to have the animation in KN3 format or in HDF5 format. It can even be written in D3 plot file. The time history output files, there's many of these in Manimo, none of which are automatically outputted. You need to specify that specifically under the control output element, but I want to touch upon a few of them here. For example, the energy file, which is very useful to analyze where, how the energies of a simulation evolve and whether the simulation is stable. Also, forces and injuries can be retrieved and linear accelerations can be retrieved, again in standard manual output file or in an HDF5 file in an HDF5 formatted file, or even in the alternate binary format or D3 uh, comma separated value file. Another example of a MITM input uh, output file is the file containing the relative displacements between specific entities. Now that you have a complete overview of the MITM input and output files, the next step is to run your MITM simulation. This can be done by opening a command file or by pressing the Run Madimo icon in Xmagic. If you need assistance on how to run Madimo, have a look at the YouTube video, Your First Madimo Run. Thank you for your attention.